Chemistry lecture number 75, Graham's Law. Diffusion is the spontaneous spreading of particles throughout a given volume until they are uniformly distributed. Gas particles will diffuse through a container if they're con concentrated in one area. For example, if volatile liquid bromine is poured into a container and the container is covered, the bromine will evaporate into a gas. The gas will spread or diffuse through the container until the container is filled with gas from top to bottom. The next picture shows the brown bromine gas as it diffuses up the container. So here's our picture. This is from a textbook. That. Okay. So this is a glass a cylinder with a, a covering over it and uh, some liquid bromine is placed in here and bromine is volatile which means it evaporates into a gas uh, very easily. So. After a few moments, you can see that the gas is starting to spread upward. A few moments later, the gas is spreading upward more. And then a few moments later, uh, the gas is completely dispersed throughout the uh, glass cylinder. So that's what uh, diffusion is, when the gas spreads from a concentrated area out into a less concentrated area. So it's moving. Gas particles that are heavy move slowly. Gas particles that are light move quickly. So, here's a picture to illustrate that. Uh, a heavy gas particle moves uh, slowly. Uh, a light gas particle moves quickly. And Graham's law states that the relative rates at which two gases under identical conditions of temperature and pressure will diffuse vary inversely as the square roots of the molar masses of the gases. Now, what, is that, what does that mean? Well, roughly speaking, it means heavy gas particles have a slower speed or velocity and light gas particles have a faster velocity. So this big ugly sentence here is just uh, a rehash of this idea here, that a gas particle that's heavy moves slower than a gas particle that is light. Now, mathematically, Graham's law is expressed as uh, VL over VH equals square root mh over ml. So VL is the velocity of the lighter gas, VH is the velocity of the heavier gas, mh is the molar mass of the heavier gas, and ml is the molar mass of the lighter gas. And the reason I put it in parentheses here is because of my lack of knowledge of how to write things on Microsoft Words. I like to do it like V sub L over V sub H equals square root mh over ml, but I wasn't able to write that on Microsoft Word. And then sometimes, in some books, instead of having <coughs> it done this way, they just write uh, you know, V1 over V2 equals square root of M2 over M1. Uh, I like to label these light and heavy because um, it makes it easier for me to set up the equation if I do it that way. But you get the basic idea. Uh, here's a tip on calculating the molar masses of gases, uh, gaseous elements. Uh, if an element is part of Brinkelhoff, it exists diatomically. Uh, thus, the formula for bromine is Br2, and the formula for iodine is I2, and the formula for nitrogen is N2, and so on. So we're going to be using Brinkelhoff in solving some of these Graham's Law problems. Now also remember that the group 8A elements, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon, are gases that exist monatomically. They don't form bonds with other atoms. All right. Let's solve a problem. How much faster does nitrogen gas <coughs> excuse me, uh, diffuse compared to radon gas? So here's our solution. Well, nitrogen is part of Brinkelhoff. See the N right there? So its molecular formula is N2. So, knowing the molecular formula, we can calculate the molar mass of nitrogen, 2 times the mass of uh, 1 mole of nitrogen, which is 14, 2 times 14 is 28 grams. So that's how much 1 mole of uh, N2 gas weighs. And then radon is a group 8 element, and if you look on the periodic chart, you'll find that 1 mole of radon weighs 222 grams. And so radon is the heavier gas. Radon is 222 gas, uh, grams, whereas nitrogen is... Uh, uh, nitrogen gas is only 28 grams per mole. So now that we know the uh, light one, nitrogen, and the heavier one, we can sort of fill in the variables. <coughs> okay, <coughs> so N2 is lighter because it's 28 grams compared to the 222 RN, 
is the heavier one. Uh, we don't know how fast the nitrogen gas is moving. We don't know how fast uh, the radon gas is moving. But they're asking for the relative speed of nitrogen compared to radon. So since we want to know the relative speed of nitrogen, how much faster it moves, we want to solve for VL divided by VH. All right, so we're just solving for this ratio. All right, so the formula is VL over VH equals square root MH over ML. So if we plug the numbers in, so we're solving for this, all right? This is what we're gonna solve for. We're gonna plug the numbers in here. MH is 222, that's the mass of the heavier gas. ML is 28, all right? So 222 divided by 28, and then take the square root of that, and we'll get 2.82. So um, VL over VH equals 2.82. So what that means is that nitrogen moves 2.82 times faster than radon gas, all right? So anytime they're asking, um, how much faster uh, one gas moves compared to another, you're just solving for this ratio. All right, let's try another problem. If helium gas diffuses at 0.05 meters per second, how fast does iodine gas diffuse at the same temperature and pressure? So <clears throat> first, let's figure out um, the molar mass of each substance. Iodine is part of Brinkelhoff, so the formula is I2, and then helium gas is a group 8 element. And then if you figure out how much one mole of iodine weighs, I think it's like 2 times 127, which gives you 254. Okay, so that's the molar mass of uh, one mole of iodine. And then I2 is 2 times that, so it's 254. So iodine is going to be the heavier one. If you look on the periodic chart, helium is 4 grams per mole. So we know this one's heavier because this is 254, and this one's 4. 254 is greater than 4. All right, so we can identify which one's heavier and lighter, and now we can identify MH, 254, ML, 4. Uh, we don't know how fast the uh, heavier one is moving. That's what we're going to solve for. How fast does iodine gas diffuse? That's what we're solving for, VH. Um, but they do tell us that the lighter gas, helium, diffuses at 0.05. So with this data, we can now plug the numbers into our formula and solve the equation. So formula is VL over VH equals square root MH over ML. So VL is 0.05, right there. VH, we don't know. Okay. MH, 254. Okay. ML, 4. All right. So square root of 254 divided by 4. So 254 divided by 4, and to take the square root, you're going to get 7.9681. And then if you divide it by 1, you haven't made any change, so that's what I did. So square root 254 over 4 is going to be 7.9686. And then I'm just going to put it over 1. All right, so I'm going to take this and put that there. So all this is going to be equal to this, 0.05 over VH equals 7.9686 over 1. And then what we do is we cross multiply. This times this equals this times this. All right. So 7.9686 times VH equals 0.05 times 1. 0.05 times 1. So and what you'll end up doing is to solve for VH, you'll divide both sides by 7.9686. Oops. 7.9686. So that cancels. VH equals 0.05 divided by 7.9686. And the answer is 6.27 times 10 to the negative third meters per second. So it, what this answer means is that if helium diffuses at that speed, that means the heavier one diffuses at this slower speed. So this is this width. You know, move the decimal point two points over. So that's one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, point, whoops, point six, two, seven meters per second. So that makes sense. This number is smaller than 
0.05. So the heavier one goes slower than the lighter one. All right, let's try one more. The rate of effusion of an unknown gas is 2.92 times faster than that of NH3. What is the approximate molar mass of the unknown gas? All right, well, here's how we solve it. So if the unknown gas is faster, it's the lighter gas. All right, so this unknown gas travels 2.92 times faster than NH3. So since it's faster, it's the lighter gas. So it moves 2.92 times faster than the heavier gas. And that means that if NH3 has a velocity of 1 meter per second, then the unknown gas has a velocity of 2.92 meters per second. All right? It moves 2.92 times, times faster. And the other bit of data we need to know is what's the molar mass of NH3? Well, it's going to be 17 grams per mole, where nitrogen is 14 grams, and then hydrogen, three of them, each weighing one. So that gives you 17 grams per mole. So that's how much one mole of NH3 weighs. All right, so we're going to take this data, the 17 grams, the 2.92, and the 1, and we're going to uh, plug them into the formula. So these numbers are now set up and arranged like this. So the unknown gas we established is the lighter gas because it moves faster. Um, we assume it moves 2.92 times faster compared to the heavier gas. And we figured out that NH3 is 17 grams per mole. All right, let's plug the numbers in. Here's our formula. VL, 2.92. Um, VH, 1. MH, 17. ML, we don't know. That's what we're going to solve for. All right, so what we do is we square both sides to get rid of the square root thing. All right, so this is here and then the square root of something squared is just equal to itself so when you square something that's being square rooted you just end up with what you started with and then 2.92 squared is 8.5264 one squared is the same as one so all this equals this and then we cross multiply again 8.5264 times ml here equals 17 times 1. All right. And then to solve for ml, what we do is we'll divide both sides by 8.5264. Okay, that'll cancel. ml equals 17 times 1 divided by 8.5264. ml equals 1.9938 or 1.99 grams per mole. And this is very close to the molar mass of uh, hydrogen gas. Okay, So it's likely that our unknown gas is uh, hydrogen. Okay, so for a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 75, Graham's Law.